So hypertension is, is high blood pressure in the words. And so it just means that the vessels that the, that the heart pumps blood into, if the pressure is high, it's more work for the heart. And also over long term, it leads to damage to the lining of those vessels and also increased chance of blood clots forming in those vessels, those vessels bursting, and sometimes of strokes. So uh, it's deleterious in the cardiovascular system all around. But the, the important thing is, again, there's no symptoms initially. So that's why it's important for regular healthcare interaction to try and detect it at that silent stage before it wreaks any damage. Yeah, it's a good question. We certainly know that hypertension disproportionately affects the black community. We, we see it in increasing frequency and we see it in younger age. Uh, in addition to that, it's, it's more often resistant to treatment in the black community. And it seems, it seems to have a particularly malignant vascular effect uh, in terms of end organ damage to the heart, the kidneys, the brain. Why we see it more often is still a subject of pretty fierce debate and research. I think it's multifactorial. Uh, there are some genetic studies that suggest that there's some, some uh, unique aspects of the way the kidneys handle the sodium load uh, that makes us uh, sensitive to salt uh, and salt's effect on causing high blood pressure, so we, we call it you know, sodium sensitive hypertension. Uh, and then there are also some probably lifestyle issues, uh, especially if you look in the American South, it tends to be a very high sodium diet and high prevalence of obesity, and so that also contributes to the hypertension rates. It, it certainly seems to be linked to the prevalence of hypertension coming at a young age. Uh, so there was a large study that came out last year. Uh, it was, you know, chaired out of San Francisco, but it was quite a robust study. They, they looked at page, uh, patients from the age of 18 to 30 and followed them for 20 years. Uh, a diverse group, whites, blacks, uh, Hispanics, and what they found was that in the prevalence of heart failure uh, at a young age, so you know, coming less than 50 years old was about 20 times higher in blacks uh, than in the non-black participants. And they found that the lion's share of that could be attributed to hypertension. And so they saw that actually for every 10 millimeters increase in the blood pressure uh, in a black person in his 20s, you doubled the risk of having heart failure occur in your 40s. So it shows the you know, very, very dramatic effect of hypertension uh, when, when it presents at a young age. And stroke is similar. Uh, we see some strokes happening at a younger age in blacks and, and more often fatal. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's sobering, but it, it's also encouraging one aspect, and that this is a, a treatable condition. So, you know, it gives you momentum and an incentive to really aggressively look for it, screen, and intervene at the early stage before you see these end organ effects. Yeah, I mean, any patient that I see with, with hypertension, I treat aggressively. You know, because again, it's, it's silent, so it's, it's easy to progress without people knowing. Uh, and then so you want to try and intervene before you see the deleterious effects of the heart, uh, brain, and kidneys. Uh, with black patients, there are, there are some nuances because we do know that they, they respond differently to certain classes of drugs that are commonly used for hypertension. So things like ACE inhibitors, uh, beta blockers, data suggests that they may be less effective in the black population. Uh, and so I, I would tend to stay away from those, at least as first line, and, and go to you know, more effective drugs like calcium channel blockers and thiazide diuretics. Uh, but I, I also really underscore the importance in everyone, and particularly in the black population, of trying to avoid salts in their diet. And, and people often recoil at, at that suggestion at first, but you do find that with time, you know, the palate adapts and, and, and you get used to it because there, there's so much sodium already in packaged foods that people buy that you really want to try and cut out salt from anything that you can uh, in addition to that. I recommend just not adding it to the table food and not adding it when, they, when they're when they cooking as well. And, and I mean, I do it myself and it does take a little while, but after a while, like I said, the, the palate adapts and, and you will find that when salt's added, you really feel it in the start because it's almost like a shock to the system. Uh, but that's a, a very important thing, especially as you know that the hypertension in blacks is often largely contributed to salt as well. I think you know, the cardiologists at Rouge Valley are, are all very cognizant of the issue and, and I think aggressively manage hypertension in all patients and, and, and know, you know what to do when they see anybody at the approach. You know, it's interesting because we have a very diverse community in Scarborough, black, South Asian, uh, Asian. Uh, so we you know, we deal with everyone appropriately, but, but I, 
I would also emphasize that the cardiac rehab program uh, is an excellent one that, and that gives yeah. all the patients instruction on sort of healthy diet, healthy lifestyle, you know, aids in, in sort of abandoning some of the harmful behavior like smoking and these things, low sodium diet. So we, we also refer a lot of our patients to that program as well. The Heart and Stroke uh, Foundation is very good. If you go on their website, they, they've actually got uh, you know, a lot of information. And they've, they've now uh, you know, made a lot of attempts to try and become more diverse and have sort of ethnic-centered uh, you know, pieces. So they have you know, recipes and things like that that, that are heart healthy. Uh, you, know, you know, regular family doctor visits again. But then, you know, I, I think it's important to speak to places, to speak to places in the community where maybe some people may, may be present but don't go to the doctor that often, so that's why you know, I've given talks at churches and uh, you know, speaking to the community focus. There was an interesting study looking at uh, Dallas, Texas, where they actually did a trial uh, at interventions in, in black barber shops. And so they had hypertensive men, and they, half of them, they just gave pamphlets at the, at the barber shop at the initial of the trial. Uh, the other half, they have a blood pressure check with every, every haircut. Uh, and have a little bit of counseling uh, from the barbers uh, because they, they sort of train them what to say and encourage them to see their doctor. And what they found was at the end of that year, uh, the, the percentage of people who were at their blood pressure target were much greater in, in those arms that, that were getting the blood pressure check from the barber shop. So it shows the, you know, the impact that these community interventions can have. So I think that's sometimes some of the creative thinking that we probably have to employ to try and capture a broader you know, fraction of the society. I would just say that you know, it's important for physicians uh, who are maybe facing black patients that their hypertension is quite difficult to treat, you know, not to give up uh, and to refer those patients on, uh, you know, maybe to specialist evaluation because the medications uh, maybe could be tweaked or replaced or more aggressively titrated. Because uh, a lot of times it, it's a bit frustrating uh, if you've got a patient on meds for a while, the blood pressure not coming down. But you know, if that's the case, really encourage them to refer on because you, know, you can't get there, you just have to.